Welcome back to Chemistry 30. This is the 16.3 Thermochemical Equations booklet. It corresponds to page 501 to 505 of the text. And what we'll be looking at is endothermic reactions, exothermic reactions, thermochemical equations, heat of combustion, heat of vaporization, and heat of fusion. Uh, we'll be looking at expressing the enthalpy change as a reactant in the equation or off to the side as a delta H number. <coughs> Uh, we'll look how energy is lost or gained during a change in state and also calculate heat absorbed or released in a chemical reaction. So thermal chemical equation first of all is just a chemical equation with the thermo, the heat value in it. So it shows everything in the physical states for reactants of products plus an energy change. If we look at exothermic reactions, we think of them as being negative because energy is released or lost by the system. <clears throat> so for example, the rusting of iron here involves the release of heat actually. So we could write it off to the side as simply enthalpy equals negative 1625 kilojoules with the negative meaning that it's exothermic. If we were to write that in the equation, since heat is being released, is produced, it would be on the product side. So we wouldn't need to have the negative in there because since it's on the product side, that means it's produced, therefore it's exothermic. Okay, so exothermic reactions, the heat value can be in the equation on the product side or off to the side as a delta H negative value. If we look at an enthalpy diagram for that, it could also represent an exothermic reaction like this. Here, in the case of an exothermic reaction, we have high energetic reactants forming a product that has a lower stored chemical potential energy. So there's extra energy left over, which is simply released. Because the energy stored in the bonds here is much higher than the energy required to be stored in the bonds of the products so the energy is released. Okay, so exothermic reactions, three ways we can kind of think of them. Enthalpy off to the side as a negative, as a product, or as a diagram here illustrating going from high to low energy. <clears throat> Endothermic reactions are just opposite, so you need to add heat into the reaction to make it happen, so we think of it as heat is entering the system, so it's positive, so in this case, um, the dissociation of ammo uh, ammonium nitrate would require heat to be added in, so it appears as a positive H value. But if, of course, if we were to insert that enthalpy into the equation itself, it would have to be a reactant since it's on the left-hand side. It's endo since it's on the left-hand side, and that also means that it has to be added in. Ammonium nitrate will not break down unless it has the available heat to add into the system in order for that to happen. And of course, as an enthalpy diagram, this is a case in which we have low uh, chemical potential energy reactants forming products that have a higher stored energy, so we require extra heat to be added into it. Okay, so endothermic, think of it as adding energy in, it has to be a reactant and uh, going from a high energy to a low energy, or st sorry, from a low energy to a higher energy state. <clears throat> okay, enthalpy of combustion, the enthalpy change for the complete quote unquote burning of one mole of substance, so burning something is really combusting something, and the energy associated with that is the molar enthalpy of combustion. Also what we'll see time for time is the symbol delta H with the raised zero there. Of course, H is enthalpy, uh, delta is change in, and that raised circle means these values are at 25 degrees C and one atmosphere pressure. Molar heat of vaporization and fusion. Va the state change of vaporization is from liquid to gas, whereas fusion is from solid to liquid. So just as the name implies here, heat required to vaporize one mole of liquid, so vaporization. Enthalpy of fusion, heat required to quote unquote melt um, one mole of solid into liquid. 
Okay. <clears throat> and uh, both of those are endothermic. You can think of ice in order to go from um, liquid water to vapor water we need to add heat in. To go from solid ice to liquid ice to liquid water you need to add heat in. So both of those are endothermic. They require the absorption of energy. And uh, if we look at the opposite processes, so enthalpy of fusion, solid to liquid, going from liquid to solid is called enthalpy of solidification, and we're going from liquid to vapor, then going from vapor back to liquid, that's condensation. So they're equal and opposite processes, equal numbers for a particular substance, but opposite direction. Because in this case, heat is being added, in this case, heat is being released. So if you think of it like this, if you had 10 joules for this, negative 10 joules for that, to make it mathematically equal, we'd have to put a negative in front of one of them. I chose to put the negative in front of a negative to make it positive. So that's why I have these negatives here, because they're equal and opposite. To make them mathematically equal, need to have that negative sign there. Okay, so here's just an example with water and how those are all related. So if we look at enthalpy of fusion, going from solid to liquid, it involves the absorption of plus 6.01 kilojoules per mole, whereas going backwards, liquid to solid for enthalpy of solidification, negative 6.01 kilojoules per mole. And likewise, Enthalpy of vaporization requires the, requires the absorption of 40.7 uh, kilojoules per mole, and then condensation from gas to back to liquid involves the release of 40.7 kilojoules per mole. So this is a good diagram not only for water, but for any substance when we're doing a phase change here. So with that, you should be able to predict what the enthalpy sign will look like for these examples. So here we have ethanol in the liquid state going to ethanol in the gas state. So liquid to gas, that involves the absorption of heat of course, so H is a positive number. We don't know what it is, all we're concerned about is whether it's positive or negative. Here ammonia going from gas to liquid, gas to liquid, so it's going to be negative. And then liquid bromine to solid bromine that's also a negative value as well. Uh, next one, solid to liquid, that involves the absorption of heat, so positive. And last one, I tricked you here with this one, it's actually a combustion reaction. Um, and of course, there's more energy released than added for the requirements. Okay, you should have a handout that has a data table um, which basically represents uh, temperatures taken over time when we heat up ice and it goes from solid ice to liquid ice to uh, vapor. What I'd like you to do is to plot the graph using that information and then with part two of this video we'll analyze that and see what we can get out of it. Okay, so make that graph from that page 503 handout and uh, then we'll see you shortly.